want to go to camp right now mm -hmm. okay so that gave you a little taste so let's start with our staff so they are the cutest folks you can see there um, that are handpicked by rachel and myself the counselors who live in the dorm with you are all college students who are studying either something in the STEM field or something in the art world, um, or we say are lovers of nerd culture. They love Minecraft, they love D&D, they love Legos, even if they aren't majoring in it. Um, so the instructors, and we'll get to the folks who teach the workshops, we'll get to more into that, are subject matter experts who teach those subjects even when it's not camp and even when it's not summertime. We also have five counselors who come from Israel. This year we have five who come to, who also love the arts, who also love STEM, and then they also want to bring us a little taste of Israel um, while we're at camp. So they are the most dedicated, most enthusiastic bunch, and we love them. Okay, so when does our camp happen and when does which program happen? So here on your screen, you can see we're offering two sessions, session one with the dates and session two. So think about when you're available. Mostly those two sessions are exactly the same, except for one thing, which I'm going to get to. Taste of Camp is for um, rising first through fourth graders. And that is a five day session so that they can get a taste of camp and see what it's like. And then hopefully join us for a full summer next year and major in a workshop and do the whole bit. Yes, Nora, you're very excited for Taste of Camp. Um, and then we do have, you can see on the bottom, a full summer option. Some of our friends do two sessions. Um, our teens do a full session. Um, so make yourself known if that's something you're interested in, but I'll, I'll, I won't focus on that for now. Okay, so if you see which dates you might be available, I'll tell you what's different about the sessions. So there's a little bit of a difference in the workshops, depending on which session you come to. So session one, you can see we always have robotics. We always have video game design, no matter which session you come to. But session one, we have marine biology. And session two, we have chemistry. So that's the difference. And in these workshops, no matter which one you take, you're gonna work on a project through the whole 12 days of camp and then present it at a celebration that we call Hagiga, that means celebration in Hebrew, at the end of camp. And we're integrating the Jewish with the science or with the art. So no one's ever gonna say, okay, it's time to be Jewish now, put down your robot, because we're doing those things all at the same time. Okay, so there's also a difference in session one and two with our art majors. So you can see we always are going to have visual art. We're always going to have theater. Those are our mainstays. But first session, we have fashion design, Jewish fashion design camp. And second session, we have circus arts, Jewish overnight circus camp. I think it might be the only one in the whole country. So again, working on a project with subject matter experts that take you through the whole session. 
sometimes I get the question, well, I'm not, I don't have a whole lot of experience as an artist. I don't have a lot of experience in robotics. Can I still come to camp? And the answer is yes. There's no prerequisites. You don't have to be at a certain level, but you do have to be passionate because you're gonna do it for a big chunk of the day. And we're gonna look at the schedule. So we're not looking for um, a lot of skill. We are skill building at camp. We're gonna take you from the level you're at to the next level, um, but we're looking for deep passion and deep interest. Okay, so as I promised, this is what a day looks like. And if anyone has questions as I'm talking, because you know I said, this is my favorite subject, I'll just go on and on and on. Put your questions in the chat. Okay, so this is what a typical day looks like. So we're, first we have to wake up. Then we're going to eat breakfast. Delicious food. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so 9 a.m. you see Kahila time. Kahila means community. And so we're all together as one community. And this is our creativity warm up. Because the, the thread that holds science and art together is, um, is innovation and creativity. Um, if you're an innovator and a scientist, and if you're an artist, you have to see the world in a little bit of a different way. So we have to get our creative juices flowing first thing in the morning. So it's some project. Maybe we're just blowing giant bubbles. Maybe we're throwing boomerangs off the roof and see if they'll come back to us. Whatever it is, it's, a, it's something to get our creativity going. Okay, so then depending on the age group, you're either gonna go to your game, that means elective in Hebrew, or you're gonna go to your workshop. And that's your major, your robotics, your video game design, your fashion design. Um, so we split the camp into two groups so that when we're in those, those uh, workshops, we're learning at appropriate grade levels. So third through sixth grade, and then seventh through 10th grade. So depending on which you are, you see you're gonna spend the good part of the morning after, and even after a snack. I told you the food is very important to us, um, either in your food game or in your workshops. Okay, after lunch, we have to take a break because we've been working so hard. And then we do another hour of workshops or another amazing elective. We get to swim in the pool. We get to play Gaga. There's a volleyball court right next to our um, dorm. So we don't, we don't do a whole lot of sitting around. Then we eat dinner. Shira means song in Hebrew. So we have a song session and all of our music is Hebrew or Jewish. And then afterward, depending on how old you are, again, we have our two groups. Either you go into the hall and have a wind down activity with your hall. And a hall is kind of like a bunk at a general camp. Or if you're in our older group, you'll have one more evening program, maybe a scavenger hunt or a sing down or something, minute 20 game, something silly. And then we'll shower and we clean up our rooms. I'm sorry, we still clean up our rooms at camp. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we go to bed. And depending on how old you are, as, uh, there's a, a little bit of a staggered bedtime. Okay, any questions in the chat, Rachel, that I can answer so far? I'm good, okay, I'll just keep chatting. Okay, so um, are we gonna talk? Let me see something, yeah, okay. So in addition to all these fun activities, we have even more going on. So there's one day where we stop everything and we LARP. So LARP, does anyone know what LARP is? LARP stands for Live Action Role Play. So it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons or a video game, live and in person. So we spend the whole day and we make up our characters and then there's weapons training. Okay, they're made out of foam but it's real. And then some people have magic spells and there might be a dragon. So we spend the whole day doing that. The maker's challenge is our, our idea of a fun Shabbat afternoon on Saturday. We will challenge you maybe to make a giant Rube Goldberg machine, which is a chain reaction machine. You know, where like the golf ball rolls and hits the dominoes that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or make a raft out of found materials and float your counselor across the pool. So that's our idea of a fun afternoon. Um, Friday night lights is when we look at the stars through our giant telescope while we're waiting for our turn to make s'mores. Oh, Shabbat s'mores, that's on there. 
Yes. And Chag Yiga, which I mentioned, which means celebration. And that's our giant festival at the end of the session where everyone gets to show off all of their hard work. So we have the theater performance. We have our runway fashion show. Everyone gets to play each other's video games. Your robot does its final challenge, et cetera, et cetera. We celebrate everybody's hard work. Okay. So let me talk about these Hugim that I keep talking about. So again, Hugim um, is Hebrew for electives. So you get three every day and you'll stick with that for the first week. And then you pick three more the second week. So that's why it says there's two sets. And those are the kinds of things that um, our counselors want to, to teach. So it could be something like, rockets and drones, or the science of cooking, or collage and mosaics, musical theater, um, shading and perspective drawing, something that um, is also still connected to the specialties that we love. Or it can be something general and campy like sports, gaga, uh, board games, anything, um, anything you want. So you pick those when you get to camp versus is a little bit of vocabulary, the workshop that you pick when you enroll. Okay. Okay. I'm going to keep going until there's a question. Okay. How can you have a camp on a college campus? Well, so we live in the dorms and you can see the, uh, some pictures here. So our dorm is just beautiful. Scripps College, it all looks like an old California mission. And our dorm actually is only one year old. Um, even though they made it to look old. And I want to take you to this hallway, this picture that we're looking at. So it's a little hard to understand, but stick with me. So you're in this hallway, and this hallway, what we're looking at is a dorm suite. And this is what we would probably call a cabin at a general camp. So everyone in this suite identifies as the same gender and um, is around the same age. And you live here, and in each room, you can see those three are having a great time. They're roommates, so two or three to a room along this hallway. And in one of those rooms are your counselors. So they all live together on this hall. And then on this hall is also the bathroom. So all of you share the bathroom, which is down the hall. So you get a little college experience. And we have an open door policy when we are on the hall. So right now you're seeing the doors closed because this picture was taken when college was in session, not when camp was in session. But we keep our doors open. And, and that is so we still are one community. And so the counselors know what's going on in the other rooms. I think it's kind of like at your house where you're in your room and your grownups are in another room, but everyone knows what's happening and you know where to find help if you need um, you can request a roommate if you have a friend who's coming to camp and reciprocal meaning that you both requested each other. Another thing that I think is really important is we're the only ones in this dorm. There might be other groups on the college campus. They don't do a big robust summer school business there. So it's not like the place is full of college kids and then it's us. Um, it would be other camp groups like ours and they're doing their thing and we're doing our thing, but we're the only ones who live in this building and have keys to the building. Laura has a question about the doors, if they stay open at night too. Yeah, so one thing that we really love about Scripps, and when the guy was taking us around, he just couldn't understand why we were so excited about this, but the lights in the hallway turn off. And the reason why I was so excited is because that means that we can crack our doors open at night and still have that um, communication and that supervision, but the light isn't shining in on you and you still get to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the food. So I told you this was the most important part. So it is delicious. Um, so one of the special things about being on a college campus is that um, grownups, you might remember the cafeteria at your college. So there is the hot entree, there's the salad bar, there's the sandwich, there's the combinations that you kind of dream up by taking one thing from that station and one thing from that station. At a general camp, usually they'll say, well, today is enchiladas and maybe there's a vegetarian option. We have all these different options in addition to vegetarian, in addition to gluten-free, dairy-free. The um, thing that we always want to be clear about is that the meat at Scripps College is not kosher. So our friends who keep kosher are vegetarian at camp. 
moving on. Okay, so how is all of this Jewish? Well, so as I mentioned, when we're in the workshops, we're always integrating the, the, our specialty with the Judaism. So I had given the example, no one's gonna say, put down your robot, it's time to be Jewish. So how do you make robotics Jewish? Well, the instructor is gonna pose a challenge to you and it might have some connection to, Jew, to Jewish values. It might have some connection to Israel. So actually this year I was talking to our robotics instructor and she was really interested in an Israeli company called BioBees because bees, which are so important to our environment are really having trouble these days. And Israel, which is the seat of technology and innovation and also of agriculture is figuring out a way to make sure that the bees can thrive and not kill bees with our pesticides. So, and they're doing it through robotics. So these are the kinds of challenges and these are the kinds of things that we're talking about and how we integrate the Jewish and Israel with our specialty. Shabbat is the best time of the week and those friends in the picture are at our uh, song session and dance party at the end of Shabbat. Um, our schedule is a little different. That's when we get to do our makers challenge. We have a all camp tie dye, all camp talent show. We um, have a popsicle, uh, popsicle dance party. What did we name it today? Our Missy Ba Artique, a popsicle dance party. Um, and of course, our big song session and Israeli dance session. So Shabbat really is the part that everyone says is their favorite. Um, I also mentioned our Israeli counselors who come and um, meeting Israelis and living with them every day really brings that to life for our kids. Um, and then making sure that we are always talking about Judaism through the lens of our specialty. How can this thing we love be Jewish is how we really bring the whole thing to life for our campers. So that's, that's how we're Jewish. Okay. Let's talk about the thing we have to talk about, which I'm sorry, we still have to be talking about this, but I won't read this slide to you, you can read it. Here's what I'll say. We had zero COVID in camp last summer and that was before we all were vaccinated. So we were very confident that we can um, stay healthy and safe this summer. So we are uh, requiring that all of our staff and all of our campers be vaccinated and as up-to-date as possible with their boosters. And I can get into what that means if you have questions about that. Um, we are in constant communication with our families about how we plan to test, what happens if somebody gets COVID, um, how we continue to test through camp, when we'll wear a mask, when we don't have to wear a mask. Um, but one of the great things about being a part of the Union for Reform Judaism and being one of 15 camps is that we rely on this larger organization to help us vet these policies and set these policies. Any questions about COVID? I'm skimming over because there's so much we can say. Okay. We love questions. So if they come up later, you can still ask them. Um, so let's talk about security and let's talk about other medical issues other than COVID. So uh, Scripps has 24 seven security. We work closely with campus security. We also have a health center on campus and two nurses who live on camp with us. So if you come to camp needing daily medications, no problem. We do med call four times a day. We we'll can talk all about that. Um, and then of course, scrapes, bruises, stomach aches, what have you. And because we're in a urban area, we're very close to a hospital or emergency room if anyone should need it. Um, but we take very good care of you. Um, so we are ready for anything. Any questions about medical needs, safety at camp? Awesome, you guys are great, okay. So the last thing I'll say is that everything we do at camp is driven by these core values that we have. Um, I talked a little bit about innovation. We think that this is the key um, to being a 21st century innovator and scientist and creator, the, the kids who are gonna clean up the mess that we have made. So um, and it's Jewish to ask questions, to be curious, to take our heritage and translate it into what is meaningful to us. Radical acceptance is something that we translate in 
we take liberty with the translation. We, we translate it in Hebrew as B'Tselem Elohim, which is the idea that everyone was made in the image of God. So whatever, everyone has a need that they have a camp, come on down. We have a wide door to participation because we are ready for kids who love art and who love STEM and everything that we can do to support those kids. Patience and perseverance is a critical skill. What we mean by this is leaning into failure, having grit um, and feeling your feelings. So we practice that um, every day at camp. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, I would love to take any questions, anything that I went quickly over that you wanna go back to, um, or if you're ready to log off, you can. Um, and I'll follow up with you, but we'll stay as long as it takes to answer anybody's questions. Rachel, did I miss anything important? In a very quiet chat tonight. I was just gonna put a few last things in the chat, our website, our social media, our email addresses. Oh, India, what, great question. Do, I, do we wash our clothes? That is a good question. If you're coming for a 12 day session, we don't offer laundry. If you're coming for um, the full four weeks, then we will do laundry for you. Can I ask a question? Please. Hi, Sloan. Hi, how are you? Um, so do the kids either pick like all science or all art, or do they have an opportunity within the different like workshop times to pick a little bit of both if they would like or stick with one or the other? Yeah, that's a great question because one of the advantages of having two specialty tracks under one roof here at Six Points West is that you do pick one for your major, for your workshop, but then with the electives, the, you get three for the first week and three the second week, you can mix and match or you can stay in your lane. You can say, I'm a STEM kid. That's what I love. I'm here for STEM. So I'm going to pick robotics and I'm going to pick drones and I'm going to write like, and stay within that. Or you could maybe you're a STEM kid, but you're not just one thing. And you would like to do a little like shading and drawing, or you would like to chill out and play some board games. So it's up to them. Okay, this, this is the part where we wait and hear what other people ask. And this is my favorite part also. Let's see, Rachel, what is something that you're really excited about for this summer? Oh, you know, talking about s'mores today, I really, I love s'mores and I also love Friday night at camp. Uh, I think it's really different and special. Uh, and so to end that night with s'mores, I'm pretty excited for that. How about you, Jordana? Well, I do love s'mores so much that we each make our own name tag at camp. And it, so mine has my name and s'mores on them. Mm -hmm. A little picture of s'mores. That's how much I love them. Um, I think I'm really excited for um, Kahila time, which is our creative daily morning creativity warm up because it's going to be something big and crazy every day. And it's just kind of like, there's just some things that you can only do at camp because they're on, we put them on such a big scale. So I'm excited for that. Awesome. Awesome. I feel like people are taking their time and maybe continuing on the rest of their evening, which is totally okay. I put we everything in the chat. Yeah, oh, Steins. Yes, Stein. Do you want to ask it? It's about roommates. How do they choose your roommates and how many people are in a room? Oh, yeah. So most rooms are two. There's very few threes. And if you have a friend who you're coming to camp with that you know you want to be a roommate, then you both put that down on one of the gajillion forms that you're going to fill out. Um, and if you don't have a friend, then we put you with someone who we think that you'll get along with, who maybe it has some similar interests with you, and you already know that they identify as the same gender, and they're around the same age as you, so, and they chose this camp, so you're starting out with a lot in common. 
And then I know we have been asked for a recording tonight. Um, so I'm going to stop recording and I will make sure we send it over to Helen who would ask for it. Oh, see, that's why I always, I don't go anywhere without Rachel DeBell. She remembers 